If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Guys, I love Anchor. It's been allowing me to edit, add music, be all over the internet. Like, I love it. Totally recommend it. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my podcast. This is Glamour Magic Beauty. I'm Trishelle, and today I am back talking about this book I'm reading called The Delectable Negro. Human Consumption and Homoeroticism Within U.S. Slave Culture by Vincent Woodard, edited by Justin A. Joyce and Dwight A. McBride. Um, and there's like a forward in there by Pat E. Patrick Johnson. So today um, I've been reading, I've just been, you know, I got a life and everything. So I'm covering the intro today. It's a good, healthy size intro though. So I'm not fucking you over when it comes to content. Um, the book is like how many chapters? It's about six chapters, but it's I mean this book is like yeah, I mean the bibliography is the last page of like because there's a bunch of notes and stuff. It's a pretty dense book, that's what I'm trying to say. It all, you know, I said all that to say we have about, what, 240 pages of material. Yeah. So, for six chapters, that's pretty dense, right? So, the intro is not not a small little section of meat to get through. Also, these are, it took me a little, I don't just read. Like, I take notes as I read. So, that also is what takes me time. Because I thought about it and I was like, why have I been on this fucking intro for so long? And I was like, oh, because you're taking notes throughout. So, um, the intro is uh, titled, Master Eated Me When I Was Me. And let me go over my notes. So, um, oh yes, let me also give a shout out. Because in the forward by E. Patrick Johnson, he mentions that Vincent Woodard was um, a gay black man. Um, and he speaks of him at like this time when he was a graduate student here at uh, UT Austin studying like American studies and I think it's one other thing. So all that to say, happy Pride Month. It's June. I didn't, you know, know that Pride Month was this month. I'm sorry I didn't mention it before, but yeah, happy Pride Month. And um, Vincent Woodard is talking about homoeroticism. And so this book is super relevant for today. He's talking about homoeroticism and he's a gay, you know, author. And that is just the timing of this book and me covering it on the podcast is perfect. So um, I want to get that, get that out of the way. Let's talk about some themes. Themes in the intro are hunger, consumption, and parasites or... Um, parasitism um some things that I took notes of were terms like self-preserving silent and slave drivers so self-preserving silence this is mentioned early on in um in the intro Woodard is speaking of how white people basically how white people have known about this like this is one of the most taboo things in um in the conversation um of slavery is one of the most taboo not talked about brushed over um i like to think of it as hidden in plain sight topics in american culture this is not just this is deep this is this is like some cannibalism is some different shit right because what i like about woodard He's a true academic. He's a true scholar. So he does his research very thoroughly. 
and he speaks about how other cultures such as like Aztec cultures, European cultures, and he name drops some African tribes. Um, you know, so he speaks about cannibalism in many different cultures as just a type of practice that goes on. Like it's just a human behavior, it's something that like we get into. But there's a particular type of relationship that is going on between white people and black people in America when it comes to race relations and human consumption. It's a special kind of relationship. It's deeper than just physical consumption because he does speak of that. And, you know, when you think of stuff like, I mean, people eating each other, um... You know, these are pretty, you know, at least I think of them, you know, as pretty heinous thoughts, especially, you know, as an American that has never even, like, considered something like that. (laughs) Like, not even for fun. I don't play with all of that, you know, I'm going to suck your blood. We can do all the weird shit. Like, nah, that's not really, that's not, like, what I'm on. So when you think of people, like, eating each other, it's very, um just like what the fuck at least for how you know I'm going to speak for the average American but when you also think about it in a relationship with um blacks and whites and slavery it's also kind of like hmm right like where does this come from so Woodard gives a lot of sources he gives like Nat Turner um that story that happened with him who he describes um, or who labels as a black insurrectionist he was boiled down and consumed. There is an entire chapter in this book about Nat Turner's, what became of him. We will get there. Um, he also uses plenty of other credible black academics and he uses, you know, phenomenal author Toni Morrison um, as reference to and as the source of um, his findings about cannibalism within U.S. slave culture and he also name drops Frederick Douglass so the man has intense research and strong sources and because I always stress that because it's not um, again I've, I've received a liberal arts education and lately just the things I learned you know in philosophy and in, in, in English class at a you know at a um liberal arts university is pushing me like it just it all comes back when you're when you have to podcast when you have to like talk and take notes on books and stuff like consider your sources consider the content that you're reading and I think I told you guys in the last episode hey let's take into consideration some facts about our author and the fact that this material is heavily edited right so again that's just um, you need to always just, hey, look at your sources for what they are, not what you want them to be. Um, let's talk about the idea of like paras- parasites and parasitism. Um, I really like the way Woodard describes his relationship. He describes slavery as a parasitic institution and that parasitism is the act of camouflaging roles in relationships, i.e. slave and master. So he describes early on, again, in the intro... He breaks down, he does a lot of defining. He defines his definitions of hunger and consumption. He defines his definition of cannibalism and his definition of parasitism. And I like that about Woodard because he gets specific like a writer should. So there's no misunderstanding. And when it comes to parasitism, it's the act of making the master, making the slave think that the slave needs them. And that the slave is a child, the slave is docile, the slave is needy, dependent, um, dumb, the slave needs all this fucking hell, whatever, whatever. What is really just the opposite is this idea of camouflaging. It's this idea of, you know, because if you think about it, right, we talk about how black people get penalized for our hair, for our skin, our lips, the way we carry ourselves. But in the same breath, we watch people, white people, non-white people, 
do these things themselves and then it's like not a problem and it's just like well see what I mean that's the way of camouflaging their relationship that's the way of like kind of like mind fucking somebody like making somebody believe that they're less than making somebody believe that they're ugly that they're unattractive that they are not worthy whole time you want to be them you want to and they're and it's the difference between I want to be like you you inspire me and then I'm I have a sick obsession I have like a a deep jealousy because when you're envious when you're jealous you jealousy is a disease it is and jealousy makes you want to love somebody as much as you want to like consume them like that that's that's it really to me jealousy is wanting to consume somebody you're envious of what they have they have something that you want and if you had it your way you would just like walk into their skin and be them and that kind of relationship is what's going on with black and white people in the united states um, it's also going on in, in in capitalism. You know, we have the people at the top who I don't. We don't fucking need them. Like they need the workers. You know, they make the workers feel like, or the employees feel like, oh, you need you need us, you need us, you need us for a paycheck. But it's like, no, bitch, you need me for a paycheck. No, who's gonna fucking come in? You guys can't come in and run all these motherfucking McDonald's like. Get the fuck out. There's not even enough employees in the fucking corporate office to run my, the fucking amount of McDonald's in a small town. Get the fuck out of here. So, I think I'm just using an example, but because capitalism and slavery, um, I mean they're I mean they're one and the same thing, right? I mean capitalism. Well, I guess the only difference is with capitalism, I pay you the least amount of money I can in slavery is I don't pay you at all. But they're both, they both have that that parasitic nature in common of exploitation. And usually it goes with exploitating someone and violating somebody spiritually and violating somebody physically. Um, what's his name? Woodard goes deep in this book and he talks about starvation. He talks about spiritual um, consumption and literal consumption. He does have cartoons in this book that show the ways in which um, black people, especially black men, were consumed. He doesn't shy away from talking about things like lynchings, things like castratings, and things like just full on sex between white men and black men in this book. He talks about those things. He talks, if you are shy about reading homoeroticism I don't recommend this book I mean he talks about things that I do not recall from Beloved but when you look it up it's there he talks about a scene in which some prison guards were forcing black male prisoners to perform fellatio on them this is something that happened in chapter 10 of the book Beloved by Toni Morrison. Um, that kind of reminds me of like Saf- Sapphire. If you guys have read the book Precious or have seen the movie Precious, it's written by an author named Sapphire. And her book, her books can get quite graphic um, sexually and with like black horrorcore, black torture porn, black trauma porn. You know, when you hear about stuff like that, when you read stuff like that, it's part of me thinks, like, is the writer just going all out to really stress what they're trying to say? Like, or is there some exaggeration in this? Is there some, you know, because that that's a very, like, heinous, that's a dark thought. It's a very heinous thought to think that white men are making black are forcing black men to do this to them um and engage in this type of act but knowing how the prison um or having some idea of how prisons work 
in the male dynamics there. No, I can't even say I would be surprised if something like that was happening. Especially, I'm from New Orleans. I'm from Louisiana. And, you know, the prisons there are not good to black men. So, you know, there's a particular kind of heinousness that comes along, I think, with prison in the South. You know, it's not to say that it's any worse off or any better than prison in other parts of the country for black men. It's just, it's another dynamic of slavery here in the country i mean it's like just pick your poison right they're all poisons but one is rat poisoning one is fucking you know snake poison the other one is scorpion venom like you know what i'm saying you pick you pick your fucking poison like it's all bad but different aspects of bad so you know i think of stuff like that is that something that's really going on is Toni Morrison being a little bit extra, I don't know, but it's a heinous thought, and it comes down to power. They speak about force, a lot of forced sexual acts in this book, They, still, you know, aka rape. I don't know if I can say that on this platform, but our word, sexual assault, you know, this shit is serious, and it definitely did go down on the plantation. Usually when we think about the rape on a plantation, we always think about you know, Massa raping, you know, his female slaves. But it also went with, you know, women, white women, coercion of black men. And according to Woodard and plenty of other scholars who he quotes in this book, white men were, you know, doing things to black men. Now, I do want to take this back a few years I was on YouTube, and I didn't know, I could not even believe the content at the time. But there was a video talking about how sometimes white plantation masters would sodomize their black male slaves as a sign of um, power and to belittle them in front of their family and in front of the plantation. I did see that type of content before, and I'm familiar with that, and with reading this book, it's starting to look like that was something that did go down, but Woodard emphasizes that we don't hear much about this because it is so taboo, and it is such a emasculating thing that people just don't want to fathom it, like wrapping, the black community wrapping their head around homosexuality is a lot and many of us can't even you know fathom or speak of stuff like that i'm being bold as fuck getting on here and talking about it and even um what it does quote tony morrison is speaking of the cannibalism on the plantation and within um the days of slavery as the unspeakable because it is just so heinous it is so crazy to think that not only were we being Where are we being beaten and raped and, you know, starved and physically mistreated all types of ways? But we were, like, literally being consumed as food. And um, uh, Woodard talks about that. This idea of, again, parasitism, like, feeding off of these people. But if the people are so worthless, because he quotes a doctor in here. He quotes this, this doctor called Samuel A. Cartwright. And Samuel A. Cartwright is super fucking racist. And he starts talking about... He writes, he takes his... The days when he was around, he would take his time and write about bullshit-ass pseudoscience. So, pseudoscience, what is pseudoscience? Fake science. Um... Again, not all books and not all information is facts. Not all information is true. A lot of shit out here is bullshit. A lot of shit out here is just that shit. It's not good. It's no, it's no goody. Fake, it's fake news. It's not facts. You know, some people like would say it's cap. You know, it's just not fucking real. So pseudoscience. Pseudoscience is the belief that white people are somehow, some way better than black people and any other person. It's pseudoscience that's making you believe that. The idea of race has been debunked. 
we are race is a social fact not a biological fact we are living in a little bit of a pseudoscience matrix right now so um it's also mentioned in Django if you guys have seen the idea if you move movie uh, Django Unchained by Tarantino awesome film features um Ooh, excuse me, guys. DiCaprio, Leonardo DiCaprio, Kerry Washington, and very legendary uh, Samuel Jackson. And, you know, there's a scene in the movie where DiCaprio is, is thinking or threatening to take a hammer and crack open Kerry Washington's skull. Particularly to blunder it while she is alive. And he threatens to do this because he says, I bet you if I open... Oh, because he already has a skull. He has a skull of his old slave, a man named Old Ben. And, you know, Old Ben was seen as a child and as a slow, dumb, just goofy, you know, like a minstrel. A minstrel show. And let's also talk about Samuel Jackson. He's, you know, in this movie, but his role in the film is the role of the um, people. Some people call it Uncle Tom, but the real name is Sambo. You know, tap dancing for Massa. And even if you look at, you know, you do examine and analyze their relationship, there's no fucking way. Calvin, what's his name? Whatever his name was in the movie, Calvin was the slave master, but. I forgot the fucking Daniel Jackson's name, but his raggedy ass, he, the way he just w- was loving up on DiCaprio was a hot ass mess. So I'm not here for it. So, um, white supremacist mindset, white supremacists thrive off of pseudoscience. They believe their whole idea of white supremacy is that they are racially a cut above the rest. Again, pseudoscience, race is not a biological fact. They particularly think that black people are animals and that we're just awful, awful, awful. But if we're so fucking awful and worthless and animalistic, then why are we good enough to consume? And also, let's talk about why on the, why on the plantation, you, you know, y'all hate black people so much, but it's cool for them to, you know, cook your food. It's cool for them to... Um, Cut your hair, shave your fucking face, and you let a fucking slave feed your baby. Like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Weird ass shit. But you hate black people so much. And every time you turn around after dark, you know, you raping somebody, touching somebody down the middle. It's weird. Um, so let's talk about the idea that, yes, black people, oh yeah, are lazy. This idea of consumption but the parasitic nature again I'm going to tie this all together parasitic relationships will have you believing that it just it just switches the role you know you really be the one in need so you make the person that you need think that they need you so that you get what you need it's like a mind fuck it's like reverse psychology um so this there's this like new idea ever since black people said no we won't work for free we don't fuck with slavery free us oh now they want to make it seem like oh well black people are lazy no um black people are not fucking lazy we worked we worked for 400 years day in day out but parasitic relationships will have you all fucked up and have you believe in things that are just just absolutely flat out not true Um, Woodard also goes on to mention how sexual attraction as a byproduct of the slave's physical, emotional, and spiritual hunger for the same. Um, so I'm trying to make sure, like, is that, whose perspective is that from? But the plantation master, Woodard insinuates that the plantation master is... Naturally, going to like be attracted to, or like this is oh, yeah, this is because they want to consume this man so bad, these people so bad, they want to be them, they naturally want to have sex with them, they naturally want to like 
They actually want to fuck. And if you think about it, let's talk about sex magic. This is all deeply rooted in magic, right? This is a magic podcast. Um, you really can't talk about cannibalism and what's going on in this book without talking about and addressing sex magic in occult practice. Sex magic is very, very real. It's very, very potent. I have a whole episode. You can go see it called Demonology. Thank you, bye, and suck you, bye. This shit is extremely real out here. So if you are running a plantation and you're raping people because rape is based on power and you need these people, you watch them all day, they they do everything for you, um, you're around that person just naturally especially with a lot of plantation masters being men and the just the power dynamic. It's about the power dynamic. It's the sociology of it. It's, I have power over you, so I feel like I can do with you what I want. I have agency over your body. You're not free. I own your freedom. I own you. And I use your body as I please. I can use your body for work. I can use your body for pleasure. I can use your body for sport, target practice. I can use your body for whatever I want to use it for because I own you. That is what this situation with, um, I think, a lot of this rape comes back down to. It's about power. Rape is about power. Rape is about you saying no, but me saying you will because I demand you and I will not take no for an answer. And I don't give a fuck about your privacy or your boundaries because I want what I want so bad. So that's what I'm reading that as. Let me see. I have so many notes. I'm a little tired, guys. I know I sound. I hope I don't sound too, too bad. I am a little sick, though. African American men and women successfully resisted their consumption and constructed a racial politics based in the hunger and desire to recover self and collective. So, yes, hunger is a huge topic in this book. Because black people are desired. People do thirst and hunger after us. We are a... We are a target. You know, this human consumption shit is still going on today. This is This book is relevant till today. I'm saying that, y'all. It's not about, oh, slavery's over. No. There's prison. And all these shootings of these black men, they consuming us still. I gotta look up that story. Because I wanted to address that anyway on here. About the kid with the organs. Because somebody, and and that's another instance where I had death of Kendrick Johnson. Mm Mm-hmm. He was harvested. He was consumed. I hate to tell you guys that. I'm not even, I'm not even about to sit here and fuck around this podcast. If you come to my podcast, you come here to get it raw and uncut. I'm not here to play with you. They still doing this shit. They still energy harvesting and consuming and eating black flesh. Prison systems are places where black flesh and black um, black souls, black energy is heavily harvested. Black people are being heavily harvested out in the streets with all of these murders of unarmed black men. We are being harvested. Our energy is being harvested as we cry over them. They're taking these black men out. They're taking their bodies because they feel like they can. They have that agency. So the white privilege makes them feel like I can shoot you and take your life whenever the fuck I want. There's a lot of things still at play here. And therefore, this material is still very relevant. Um, We know with the sexual attraction between white and black men I, I I can't help but to believe you know Wooder's text because I know how relationships you know I'm a straight woman and 
on the outside looking in. I don't know anything about the queer, you know, world like that. So who am I to say what is and what isn't going on? And it's just like, wow, very touching. Touching. Okay. Let me see. Oh, yes. Woodard also speaks of consumption dating back to the transatlantic slave trade. A connection between global expansion and a sexual libido for African flesh. Taking it back to another pop culture reference. Juan in Moonlight tells Chiron black people were some of the first people on this planet. And yes, um, global expansion and a sexual libido for African flesh. As Christopher Columbus and crew went around the world and ah, yeah, yeah, doing what they were doing, yes, I'm sure they saw black people everywhere and we were definitely consumed. I mean, come on, you guys. You guys should know by now some of the atrocities that Christopher Columbus um, implemented against black people. Just heinous things. So he was definitely energy harvesting. Um, See, the truth is, guys, when it comes to this parasitic shit with these white people and black people in America and in the world, they do have the power to completely exterminate black people. But they need, but a parasite needs a host, right? And I think somebody tweeted that, so shout out to them. A parasite needs a host. We are their, we are their food. Black culture is their food. Black culture is pop culture. Hip hop culture is pop culture. Black people are the culture. We create the movement. We create what the fuck going on. We create the style. But we have so little power because the relationship is still camouflaged that. We need a system of white people, and we don't, you know, we do not. Um, let me see, let me see. Oh, yeah, page 11 of this book, he talks about the cartoons with the Negro Soup cartoon. Um, and then let me see. Yes, energy harvesting, energy exchange, sex magic. Um, it's very serious, y'all. You gotta be careful who you're sharing your body with. Um, let me see. Oh, yes. Another note I took. Black men were auctioned on the slave um, block, you know, naked. Black women and men. And that's a way of, like, consuming us. Like, treating us as sexual property. Not having respect for our boundaries, our space. And more than anything, from reading just the intro, I find that black people come across as more spiritually consumed than anything. More spiritually and more mentally consumed than anything. And it's very concerning. Um, Let's see. I already covered that. Yes, so with the situation with Kendrick Johnson, I want to go back to that for a little bit. Guys, um, I was told because of that situation to never list yourself as an organ donor because you become a target. You know, that little boy, was that young man was murdered brutally for his organs, and I just can't even believe it. I can't even believe it. It's unfathomable that that could happen to somebody. Um, and that, that man was you know, that that man was taken and cornered like that. I can't even believe it. Treated like that, rolled up in that gym. I can't even believe it. But it's because the energy harvesting is real. Black people, please be careful. Listen to what I'm saying. You must protect your energy. You must protect yourself. You must walk in your highest light. And you must, you know, get you some business and get somewhere and sit the fuck down. Find your ancestors. I'm not trying to judge you, but seriously, because the spiritual warfare shit, there is more spiritual warfare going on than a little bit, y'all. This shit is serious. This spiritual consumption shit, this hunger, it's not just about them chopping up a bunch of niggas and eating them like Popeyes. It's like some serious shit with like spiritual consumption, y'all. Your spirits are being eaten. Your spirits are being feasted on. You gotta be careful. You gotta be very, very, very careful. So I just urge you all to be careful. And watch yourself, because the spiritual warfare shit is real. It's all types of 
little mental mind games of Dr. Matrix got up his sleeve. Let's see. Oh, yes. Another note. With the organ harvesting, let's talk about how George Washington had a mouthful of a bunch of slaves' teeth. Energy harvesting, y'all. That is a form of it. That is a form of energy harvesting. He could have got some teeth probably from somewhere else. But he was like, no, I feel like I can get it from you. You are my property. I can, so I will. I have agency over your body. I'll pay you a little bit of money. I'm going to do me. Um, let's see. He talks about, yes, yeah, sex, lynching, castration, and some of the harmful acts that um, were used to harvest energy. And then he kind of speaks of the United States as cannibal nation a little bit. And, it's, and yes, the United States is cannibal nation because this country does live off of, as a black person, I feel like this country does live off of um, the energy harvesting of black people. You know, again, of outrage media outrage you gotta be careful you can't respond to everything that the media come at you with because the media is a machine in itself the media is getting they're getting paid to be there they gotta make television too bitch the same way mona scott young gotta make television for love and hip-hop they gotta make television for the fucking news so they're going to make television they are they're gonna make tv that being said be mindful of what you watch be mindful of what you listen to and oh, sorry be mindful check them sources and know that there's an agenda out here we live in a simulation there's a matrix you know they want you to believe certain things they want you to be again seeing black people always in a in a certain light because it feeds their mission it feeds um, what they have going on, their energy harvesting. Do not let them ar- harvest your energy. Don't give your energy towards stupid shit. Don't let them, you know, stay strapped. Black people, get you, get you some, something on you because, and don't be hard, don't be uh, registering as an organ donor because these are ways that you can leave yourself as a target for energy harvesting. Energy harvesting is very real. There is a, definitely occult a magic and occult science going on in the white community just like there is in the black community you know again the parasitic nature they you know discouraged us from talking to our ancestors from having relationships with them from believing in african um spirituality and african religions and made us convert to christianity as they continued to behind the scenes practice magic and you know whatever whatever else and this shit is very spiritual though Again, for more pop culture reference on it, you can always check out Lovecraft Country. They speak about spells and magic and white supremacy and and the political and social dynamics of those two groups of people. That's a great show to watch if you want to kind of get a visual idea. But please understand, if you want to really sit down and meditate on some real shit, on some real art, some real words, I highly recommend Delectable Negro. That's all the notes I have for right now for the intro. Cannibalism is such a huge topic. Black people do not recognize that we do live amongst cannibals. We do live amongst spirits, angels, and demons. We do, y'all. And you have to move accordingly. Figure out who you are and then move accordingly. With that being said, I'm going to come back soon with more videos. I got some stuff in the works right now. I'm extremely sleepy. I just wanted to get this podcast out of the way tonight. So I can just give you guys that content and move forward. So please let me know what you think about the intro of this book. Hit me up. Glamour Magic Beauty on Instagram. Glamour Magic Beauty on Twitter. I would love to know your thoughts about this book. If you have more questions, please ask them. And again, we'll be going through more chapters together. So this is not the last time I'm going to be talking about it. This is just the intro. Bye. Talk to you guys soon.